Okay, I've got some data here at the top of my page and I want to find all of these things about the data. So I want to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the mid-range based on the data that's given to me here. The first thing I want to do if I'm looking for all of these things is I want to put my numbers in order. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put them in order from lowest to highest. So I have, and actually let me get a different colored pen here that we can actually see. All right, I'm gonna go through and put these in order from lowest to highest. So it looks like 106 is my lowest. So I have two 106s, cross those off. Uh, the next lowest looks like 134. The next lowest looks like 136. Um, then I have a 148. Uh, I have three 153s. I need to make sure that I put all of them. I don't know if we can still see this here. Yep. That's my three 153s. I have a 175 and a 187. So here I've put my numbers in order from least to greatest, and that's going to help me calculate these things. So to find the mean, what I need to do for the mean, the mean is, let me write it over here, the mean is the sum of the data points. So those pieces of information here, we just need to add them all together and we divide that by the number of um, data items in our data set. And I'll call those data items because that's what the book calls them, so let me change that here. Items over the number of items. Okay, so in this case I'm just going to add those things up. Uh, let's see here. We have 106 plus 106. Oops, that was not a 6. <laughs> 106 plus 106 plus 134 plus 136 plus 148 plus 153 plus 153 plus 153. Don't, uh, don't forget any of those 153s plus 175 plus 187 and that gives us in this case it says 1451 so that's what goes on top 1451 that's the sum of all of the data items and then on the bottom is the number of items well how many items do we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten items and so if I put that into my calculator, 1451 divided by 10. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me move it down a little bit. That comes to 145.1. Okay, so that's, oops, <laughs> that didn't help at all. Now that I look at it, I see you're just seeing the reflection of the light in my office. Um, but yeah, it, when we divide the sum of the data items, by the number of items in our data set, we get 145.1. So that is the mean. Okay, what about the median? What was the definition of the median? Uh, the median, we have to, for median, we definitely have to arrange these in order from smallest to largest. And if the number is odd, then it'll be the item in the middle of the list. If the number is even, the median is going to be adding the two numbers in the middle of the list together and dividing by two, okay? So in this case, we just said we had 10, oh, my phone thinks I'm talking to it again. In this case, we said we had 10 data items. That's an even number of data items. What we need to do then is find the two that are in the middle, and you can do this with your fingers. So these two move in, move in, move in, move in, and here are my two items in the middle. That doesn't feel like the middle for some reason, but it is. Yep, I've got five on this side, five on that side. 
So for the median, this is the sum of the two middle items divided by two. And the reason that's the case here, this is because this is even number of items. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it looks like you can see that. Um, because we have an even number of items, we're looking at the sum of the two middle items divided by two. If we had an odd number of items, we would just find the one that was dead center, and that would be our median. But in this case, we've got 148 plus 153 divided by 2. And my phone is really convinced I'm talking to it. <laughs> All right, pop that into our calculator. 148 plus 153 divided by, whoa, 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 whoa. 148 plus 153 divided by 2 and that gives us 150.5 for our median. Okay, the mode. If we want to find the mode, the definition of the mode, let me find it in the book so I don't misquote it to you. The definition of the mode is just the value that occurs most often in the data set. So which number shows up most often? Well, we've got two 106s. These guys just show up once, but we have 153 shows up three times. It shows up more times than anything else in the, in the data set. If more than one data value had the highest frequency, say we had three 106s and three 153s, both of those would be modes. If we didn't have any number that had more than anything else, then there would be no mode. So if we just had one of each number, there would be no mode. But right now, the situation we're in is we've got three 153s, and that's more than any other number, so our mode is 153. And then the last thing we need is the mid-range. And the formula for the mid-range so mode, let me actually write down that definition really quickly so that we've got it. Mode is data item that appears most often. Um, if more than one item appears uh, how did they say that? More than one item has the highest frequency. So if we had two items that showed up three times in this case, um, if, one, if more than one item appears with highest frequency then both are modes. So you can still see what I'm writing here, yep. If no item appears most often, so if there was the exact same number of every single item in our data set, if no item appears most often, there is no mode. Okay, so we've got that about the mode. Now the mid-range. How do we find the mid-range? Mid-range, the formula for that is highest plus, <laughs> learn how to spell highest, highest plus lowest divided by 2. That's the formula for the mid-range. We just want to know what falls directly between the highest number and the lowest number. So in this case, my highest number, let's see, 187 plus my lowest number is 106. 
So that's 293 divided by 2, divided by 2, that gives us 146.5 for our mid-range. Okay, so to go over this again really quickly, we have a data set. When we're looking for these, I think the book calls them measures of central tendency, it helps for some of them to uh, put these in order. So I went ahead and put the numbers in order from least to greatest. To find the mean, I added all of the data items together, including duplicates. Don't forget to add every single number that's there and divided by the number of items. In this case, there were one, the sum of all of these equaled 1,005, I read good, 1,451, and there were 10 items, so I divided by 10, that gave us 145.1. For the median, because there are an even number of items here, we had to find the two that were in the middle of the list. We needed to add them together, so 148 plus 153, and divide by 2. That gave us a median of 150.5. To find the mode, we had to look for the number that appeared most often in our data. In this case, we had a clear-cut winner. It was 153. 153 showed up three times. That's more than any other number showed up in the list. So 153 is the mode. But you need to remember that if more than one number appears with the same highest frequency, both of those numbers are modes. And if all of the numbers occur with the same frequency, then no number. There is no mode. And then finally, we did the mid-range. The mid-range says take the highest number and the lowest number and add them together and divide by 2. In this case, 187 plus 106 gave us 293 divided by 2 gave us 146.5 for the mid-range. And that's how to find all of these measures of central tendency from a data set.